Welcome back. Elon Musk says trials are underway to develop a technology that lets you control your phone and computer with your thoughts. On Monday, he announced his tech company, Neuralink, successfully completed its first human implant. The company says the implant is mainly meant to help people suffering from quadriplegia, lives who live as normal of a life as they can. That's the hope. But what else could it be used for? Let's bring in Professor Cindy Chestick, Associate Chair for Research and Associate Professor of Biomedical Engineering at U of M's College of Engineering. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. So firstly, Professor Chistek, I want to ask you, can you tell us your experience with neural technology? Most of us don't even think about this. Yeah, so um, I, I work in a field called brain machine interfaces. And what we do is we record uh, tiny signals from the brain and we try to apply machine learning algorithms to those signals and try to create control signals for uh, assistive technology. So that could be uh, stimulating paralyzed muscles, um, you know, controlling a computer cursor. Um, and some of the recent exciting work in the field is actually uh, decoding speech. So, you know, reading speech intention uh, directly out of the brain. So who could this benefit kind of speak to what their lives are like, maybe the challenges they face? So why so much optimism here? Yeah, so this this technology is, is very much uh, focused on people with uh, severe disabilities. So we're, we're talking about very high level uh, paralysis um, and also like a complete inability to speak. Um, so that is really where these implantable devices are, are focused on on people who have no other uh, available treatments. Can you give us a quick explainer on what exactly this implant is meant to do? Um, we were just talking about it leading up to this segment. It's hard to kind of wrap your mind around thinking opening Facebook and then it, and then it does it. Um, sometimes you would imagine you have thoughts that necessarily you don't need to see become an action, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I actually don't think it's that close to, to reading Facebook <laughs> um, at this point. So what we're, I think what we're, we're hoping to see from this is, you know, um, actually useful signals, right? So the very cool thing about the Neuralink implant is it's it's very high channel count. So it, it's a thousand channels that is much more than um, has ever been used for uh, brain machine interfaces. It's a fully implantable system. So there's no, you know, computer carts of equipment uh, making this work. Um, but I think we're still waiting to see whether it can replicate things that we've already seen uh, in the literature. So like recent exciting results um, is uh, 70 words per minute, which is pretty good. Um, but you know, we're, we're still waiting to see if that happens. This is the very, very first time they've done this uh, in a person. What does it take to get a device like this approved for human trials? Yeah, it is a very long process. And I know that uh, Neuralink has been engaged with the FDA for a long time. Um, it's, you know, a, a constant uh, back and forth to uh, make sure that all of the risks are managed as well as it can be. Um, this study is being done under what's called uh, an investigational device exemption, which means it, it's not, you know, going for a full approval yet. They're just getting permission to do initial human testing. Um, and so, you know, this this person is, is a pioneer um, and has, you know, volunteered to do a study um, that, you know, may not have any benefit to them, but uh, could have benefit to people in the future. I do want to take a moment to talk about the critics. Some have said the technology carries with it certain ethical, even societal concerns. Mainly, it could create this new type of class system, if you will. Is there any validity, in your opinion, to those claims? I mean, I think that the biggest concern with with systems like this is is safety, which you know I'm sure the the FDA is very uh, appropriately managing. Um, and I think for the foreseeable future, this is um, just going to be used in people that have a really uh, you know severe uh, disability or, or need for this technology. Um, so you know we we hear all these things about you know uh, brain implants for for able-bodied people. That is not in the works. That is not going to happen anytime soon. Um, and so I think that. You know, for the foreseeable future, um, you know, something that requires a brain surgery is only going to be a treatment of uh, last resort.
Yeah, I'd love to have you kind of elaborate on that. What are some of the health risks this technology can pose, especially with it being so close to your brain? Is it just the risk of surgery itself or potentially short-term, long-term implications of the device? So every brain surgery has risks um, and, you know, so I'm sure that they have um, a, a consent process where they outline all of the risks associated with the surgery. Um, there's some very new things uh, that are being done with the Neuralink implant. For example, there's a robot uh, involved in implanting devices. Um, on the other hand, they, they've also made the electrodes uh, extremely small. So this is this is one of the new electrodes that is uh, smaller than neurons themselves. Um, and so the the idea behind the robot is that it can uh, place these extremely small wires uh, between blood vessels. And so so they are hoping to uh, reduce the risk of the surgery. Um, but every brain surgery has risks, and um, I'm sure that was you know outlined to the study participant. Elon Musk, certainly an innovator, has been successful with many of his endeavors, uh, especially science-based ones. I might be putting you on the spot here. If you were in need of one, you're, you're not yourself right now, you are in need of such a device, would you get one yourself? So I... Yes, I would like to think so. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're trying to make these devices, you know, they're they're just uh, starting to be <laughs> used in people. Um, but I think that this is a very promising technology for uh, severe paralysis and uh, the inability to speak. So yes, I, I hope that uh, those systems will become widely available. All right, that was a great way to gauge your level of confidence in this. <laughs> professor Cindy Chestick, Associate Chair for Research and Associate Professor of Biomedical Engineering at U of M's College of Engineering. Thank you so much for being on with us this evening. We appreciate it. Thank you.